This video is a demonstration of the clavicle bone. After the demonstration, the student should be able to identify the given bone, its size, size determination, important features, keep it in anatomical position, describe the different types of joint formed by the given bone and its muscle attachment. Clavicle in the Latin word means a small key. It supports the shoulder so that the arm can swing clearly from the trunk and it also transmits the weight of the upper limb to the sternum. The bone has a curved part called the shaft and it has got two ends, the medial end and the lateral end. For the side determination, the following features has to be noted. The lateral end, it is flat and the medial end, it is large and quadrilateral. The shaft is slightly curved so that it is convex forwards in its medial two-third and concave forwards in its lateral one-third. The inferior surface is grooved in its middle one-third. One the peculiarities of the clavicle bone. It is the only long bone which lies horizontally. It is subcutaneous throughout. It's the first bone to start ossification. It is the only long bone which ossifies in membrane. It is the long bone which has got two primary centers of ossification. There is no medullary cavity and it is occasionally pierced by the middle supraclavicular nerve. The features of the clavicle. The shaft. The shaft is divisible into lateral one-third and medial two-third. The lateral one-third of the shaft is flattened from above downwards and has two borders, anterior and posterior border. Anterior border is concave forwards, the posterior border it is convex backwards. This part of the bone has got two surfaces, superior surface and an inferior surface. The superior surface is subcutaneous and the inferior surface presents an elevation called the conoid tubercle and a ridge which extends backwards is called the trapezoid ridge. Medial two-third of the shaft is rounded and has got four surfaces. Anterior surface convex forwards. Posterior surface is smooth. Superior surface is rough in its medial part. The inferior surface has a rough oval impression at the medial end. The lateral half of this surface has a longitudinal subclavian groove. The ends, the lateral end and the medial end. The lateral or the acromial end is flattened from above downwards and it bears a facet that articulates with the acromion process of the scapula to form the acromioclavicular joint. The medial or the sternal end is quadrangular and articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium sternum to form the sternoclavicular joint. Now the attachments. At the lateral end, the margin articular surface gives attachment to the joint capsule. The medial end, the margin of the articular surface gives attachment to the fibrous capsule of the joint, the articular disc and also the interclavicular ligament superiorly. The attachments on the lateral one third of the shaft. The anterior border gives origin to the deltoid muscle. The posterior border provides attachment to the trapezius muscle. The conoid tubercle and the trapezoid ridge gives attachment to the conoid and trapezoid parts of the coracoclavicular ligament. Medial two-third of the shaft, the anterior surface gives origin to the pectoralis major muscle. The superior surface gives origin to the clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The oval impression on the inferior surface at the medial end gives attachment to the costoclavicular ligament. And the subclavian groove gives insertion to the subclavius muscle. Whereas the two lips of the group give attachment to the clavipectoral fascia. The posterior surface close to the medial end gives origin to the sternohyoid muscle. The nutrient foramen transmits a branch of the suprascapular artery. The applied for the scapula are 
The scapula is the most weakest and is commonly fractured by falling in the outstretched hand. And the most common site for the fracture is junction between the two curvatures of the bone. So this one here is the weakest part of the clavicle. And often the lateral fragment is displaced downward by the weight of the limb. So at the end of this demonstration, the student should be able to identify and also demonstrate the important muscle attachments of the given bone. Thank you.